Hello there, Anatomy Enthusiasts. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, whatever. So, I first of all congratulate you on starting your new segment of Osteology. So, welcome to the Osteology of Upper Limbs. So, uh, we have all kinds of bones, humerus, raised ulna, the hand bones, and we have the scapula and clavicle. We have our modules and all. So, uh, today in our, this video, we are diving into the Osteology of Scapula and Clavicle. So, I'll introduce to you to our team. So, I am Vaishnavi. Hi, I am Ruturaj. Hi, I am Nikhil. Hi. So let's start with the first bone of upper limb, that is a clavicle bone. So clavicle is a long bone. It supports the shoulder so that the arm could flex free away from the tongue. And it also helps in the transferring the weight of the upper limb to the sternum. So before starting the side determination part, I would like to address the peculiarity of the clavicle bone. So the first peculiarity is it's the only long bone that lies horizontally in our body. It is the, secondly, it is the first bone to ossify in our body. Thirdly, it is subcutaneous throughout. And fourthly, it has two primary center in our body. So yeah, so now we'll talk about the side determination part. So this is the clavicle bone, as you can see, I have marked with a uh, like different color for the better understanding. So like if for the examiner gives you this one, how you will identify? So first you will look after like uh, the clavicle is the S-shaped bone. So if you will turn around, so you can see that it looks like S-shaped bone. So first sign is this. Secondly, you will look after the flattened surface, like uh, in the clavicle. So one surface uh, is the like the uh, flattened surface and one is a, like a uh, cylindrical part. So this is how you'll identify it like yeah, this is the clavicle bone. Now we'll go into the deep and we'll talk about the like the uh, specific part. Like the first we'll talk about the lateral part. So according to the new addition of the Gray's anatomy, the clavicle is divided into the five parts. Uh, previously it was uh, divided into three parts, but uh, in the latest edition it is divided into the five parts. So, so the lateral two fifth and the medial three fifth. So first we'll talk about the lateral two fifth part. So lateral two fifth part has like four the four part. We have the uh, we have the anterior border, we have the posterior border, we have the superior surface, and we have the inferior surface. Okay, so yeah, talking about the anterior surface, like the, this surface, the, the one which is facing the anterior, this is the concave in shape. So it is a thin, rough, and slightly concave. It may have the small deltoid tubercle, I'll show you here. So uh, this area uh, is the deltoid tubercle part. So it serves as the attachment for the deltoid muscle. We, we, are not, we are not going to go deep into the muscle part. So uh, talking about the next part, uh, the, that is the uh, posterior border. So in the posterior border, so it is convex and rough due to the muscle attachment. Now we talk about the superior surface, like the, the, this surface. So in the superior surface, the edges, like the ends, okay, the ends parts are rough, but the center, the blue one part, is smooth and can be felt under the skin. Not talking about the inferior surface. So inferior surface, like uh, uh, this is the inferior surface. So inferior surface has the, the two features. So we have the first the conoid tubercle and we have the trapezoid line. So what are they? So these are the part of the coracoclavicular ligament, like where the coracoclavicular ligament attached, so, like specific part of the coracoclavicular uh, Coraco clavicle ligament attached to the clavicle bone. So the conoid tubercle, like the one which with the red dot, so it is a prominent bump near the back where the conoid part of the coraco clavicle ligament attached. Now coming on to the trapezoid line, so it is a narrow rough strip running forward and outward from the conoid tubercle towards the outer end. The trapezoid part of the coraco clavicle ligament attaches here. Okay. Now we will talk about the lateral end. So the lateral end, we have a, like it has a small facet. Like uh, as you can see here, it is a small uh, round facet for joining with the acromion of the scapula. So this facet uh, faces outward and slightly downward. Like uh, I can sh I show you. So yeah, so from here you can see it faces a little bit downward. Okay, now we'll talk about the nutrient foramen. So nutrient foramen is a little bit medially uh, towards the bone, uh, like a medially towards the lateral surface. Okay, uh, so yeah, so it is a small opening called the nutrient foramen. It's just located to the side of the grooves. Okay, so yeah, now we'll come uh, to the medial three-fifths of the clavicle. As you can see here, I've divided uh, it into the three part, like one, two, and three part. So the medial three part of the uh, medial three-fifths of the clavicle, this part of the clavicle is either cylindrical, as you can see here, it is cylindrical, or either prismoid in shape, and that's four shape, uh, like a the upper surface, the anterior surface, the posterior surface, and the inferior surface. Now talking about the uh, anterior surface, uh, like uh, putting it uh, like this way. So the anterior surface is mostly rough, but became smooth and rounded as it expands laterally. Like, as we go laterally, so it became smoother and rounder. So the lateral part forms the upper boundary of the infraclavicular fossa, a uh, depression below the clavicle. Now we talk about the upper part. So the upper part uh, uh, is a lies the upper part medially is a rough end, but laterally it became smooth. Like this part is mostly rough, but as we go laterally, it became smoother. So yeah, that's it for the upper part. So now we'll talk about the posterior surface of the medial three-fifth part. So yeah, so here it is. So the uh, posterior surface, like this one is the posterior surface. So medially it is smooth and has no distinct feature, but laterally it has a groove that runs along the length of the bone. Okay, now we'll talk about the inferior surface. So near the sternal end, like this part, it has a rough and over impression, okay, which may be slightly depressed. Okay, the margin of this uh, area provides attachments to the posteroclavicular ligament, which connects the clavicle to the first strip of the cartilage. Now we'll move to the sternal end. So you can see this part is the sternal end. So the sternal end of the clavicle point, uh, like uh, this uh, medially, we have downward, uh, downward and uh, forward also. Okay, so it articulates with the clavicular notch of the membrane sternite, like, like this. So, yeah, so uh, talking about the next, the special feature of this part. So the surface is usually quadrangular, as you can see, it is a quadrangular in shape, but can sometimes be triangular also. It is irregular and pitted. Okay, the upper part is slightly roughened for the attachment of the intra intraclavicular ligament, the sternoclavicular joint capsule, and the articular disc. Now, we are talking about the articulation surfaces. So the smooth and it smooths and extends slightly onto the inferior surface, where it articulates with the first coastal cartilage. Now, next, we will talk about the ossification of this one. So, I am going to tell about ossification of clavicle, fracture of clavicle, and previous year question. In first, we will describe about ossification of clavicle. Uh, in ossification, the clavicle has two primary centers and two secondary centers. 
uh, the two primary centers are located at the shaft of Clavicle and the other secondary center, uh, the first one is located at medially uh, to the sternum uh, and the other one which is located at laterally to the acromion. Then we will describe the time of appearance and their time of fusion. The first we will describe about primary center. The primary center appear at 5th to 6th week of intrauterine life and their fusion time is for, uh, 45th uh, day of intrauterine life. Then secondary center. Uh, the, their time of appearance is 19 to 20 years and in females they appear early and uh, their fusion is 25th year. After that there is a clinical uh, term which is called as uh, pseudocranial diastosis in which there is an absence of clavicle or partial development of clavicle leads to cause pseudocranial diastosis in which there is a hypoplastic clavicle which simply means that the clavicle is underdeveloped. Then fracture of clavicle. The most common fracture site of clavicle is medial 3 fifth and lateral 2 fifth as per Gray's anatomy latest edition. But in a previous, it was given that the most common fracture is at medial two third and lateral one third. So take the note about it. We will move on P by six. So question first: A man had fallen from height and landed uh, on an outstretched hand. The patient was found to have a fracture of clavicle. What is the most common location of this fracture, or where this fracture can be? This question was asked in uh, SFMG June 2022. So the options are junction of medial one third and lateral two third. Option B, junction of medial two third and lateral one third. Option C, junction of medial one third and medial one third. Option D, uh, in the middle of the clavicle. So, uh, as we discussed, the correct answer is the junction of medial two third and lateral one third. So, uh, take a note that this question was asked on the uh, old edition of the uh, Grey's Anatomy. Question: Weight transmission from upper limb to axial skeleton is done by all except option A, costoclavicular ligament. Option B, costoacromial ligament. Option C, corecoclavicular ligament. Option D, interclavicular ligament. For the weight transmission from upper limb to axial skeleton is done by the option B, corecoacromial ligament. This is about previous year question. Focusing on the crucial bone that is scapula, uh, the scapula is commonly known as shoulder blade. So grab your lap coat and let's get started. And I said scapula crucial. Why is the small, flat, triangular shaped bone crucial? Well, if you know scapula, then only you will understand numerous better. Starting with its general point, well, uh, scapula is uh, the posterior bone of the shoulder girdle. It develops from enchondral ossification, which is the hyaline, uh, we can say the um, cartilage of hyaline. Then talking about its anatomical position, well, it lies posterior laterally. Means if this is a person, uh, face, this is the backside, uh, forget it. Backside is basically the posterior side. And lateral means the, uh, uh, see, if this is center of your body, so uh, which is in center, we call it medial. And the thing which is on the uh, far away from the center is the lateral so backside and the lateral side is the posterior lateral aspect of the chest uh, so it covers the rib from the second to the seventh uh, rib then talking about its border which it has two borders medial and lateral well the medial border lies parallel as you can see to the vertebral column and it can be uh, like you can say it is five centimeter away from the spine uh, and this way here you can see is the uh, lateral border we're talking to you about the parts of scapula. First, we will uh, see like uh, scapula is divided into two parts. That is one is body and the second is processes. Talking about body, as we talked, it is large and triangular, flat also. Talking about its surfaces to begin with, surfaces are two, that is anterior and posterior. As you can see, this one part is anterior and this is the posterior which has the spinous process. So, as we talked about surfaces, so this one comes as the anterior surface, whereas this which has these processes come as the posterior surface. Well, talking about its borders, we have three types of border that is medial, lateral and superior. So here you can see this is the anterior side and this is the posterior side as we have learned. So this uh, which I have marked with the pink one is the superior border. Then here we have the medial border and here we have the lateral border. Uh, from the back side, this is superior, this is medial and this is lateral. Showing you the borders, the one which is with the glenoid cavity is the lateral border. The opposite to it is the medial border and the upper one, superior border. So our next part, we have angles. So superior, inferior, lateral. So talking about angles, you can see here, as I have marked, this is the superior, this is the lateral, which is with the glenoid cavity, and this is the inferior. Angles, superior, lateral, and inferior. To our next segment, we have notches. Notches are of three types to begin with, uh, suprascapula, spinoglenoid, and uh, complex scapula. Talking about uh, suprascapula, but it lies at the end of the superior border. So here we have the border, and at the end, you can see this depression. This is our suprascapula. Uh, from the back, you can see it here. Talking about our second, that is spinoglenoid, which you can see it here. Well, it is between the spinous process, this is the spinous process, and the glenoid cavity. Uh, and uh, like it favors the entry of certain vessels which can be arteries and nerves which you will learn later of course and talking about the third that is circumflex scapular notch it is on the lateral border here notches here you can see the depression or the notches so this is our suprascapular notch well here you can see another depression or we can see the u shape this is the notch which is spine of the notch the notch. we have uh, three types uh, first uh, uh, See, this is the glenoid cavity. Superior part of glenoid cavity, we have supraglenoid. Inferior part of glenoid cavity, we have infraglenoid. And here, on the edge of the spinous process, we have the deltoid tubercle. So, talking about our tubercles, uh, as we know, this is our glenoid cavity. So, here we have the supraglenoid tubercle. Here we have the infraglenoid tubercle. And the other one, that is deltoid tubercle, lies here. 
or fossa we have three types uh, uh subscapular lies on the anterior part here then we have supraspinous infraspinous this is spinous process upper side of the spine we have supraspinous uh, inferior side of spine we have infraspinous process here fossa on anterior side you can see this is our subscapular fossa on the posterior side this is supraspinous and this is infraspinous fossa Going on to the processes, we have three types of processes, spinous, acromion, coracoid. So, talking about spinous, here it is on the posterior side and uh, you can see it clearly here, uh, it is spinous process. Then we have acromion, you can see here, or uh, this one is the acromion process and this here is the coracoid process. Processes. So, about our processes, uh, we will take the other side. This is our spinous process. Then we have it here as our acromion process and here as our coracoid process. Scapula is a typical flat shaped bone that is present on the dorsal, that is the posterior side of the body. How to perfectly determine the position of the scapula in the body? So, the sphenoid cavity, which articulates with the humerus, is always present laterally, whereas the spinous process is always present posterior. So, now we will learn about the articulation of the scapula with other bones. So, this is humerus. The head of the humerus articulates with the sphenoid cavity of the scapula, forming the lateral humerus joint. Secondly, the clavicle. Acromial process of scapula articulates with the lateral end of the clavicle to form the acromial clavicular joint. About the ossification centers of the scapula, there are in total eight ossification centers present in the scapula, of which one is the primary one and other seven are the secondary ones. We'll start learning about the functions of the scapula. The scapula has several critical functions. Firstly, starting with the stability, it provides a stable base for many arm movements by serving as an anchor point for various muscles. It means it acts as an attachment point for various muscles which will be further discussed. Then comes the mobility. The structure of the scapula is made such to allow a wide range of more shoulder movements, firstly, we'll learn about the elevation and depression. So, shoulder or scapular elevation refers to the upward movement of the shoulder blades, such as when performing a shrug. Secondly, the scapular depression is opposite movement. It's when the shoulder blades move down to their natural resting position. Uh, now, we'll talk about the protraction and retraction of scapula. So, scapular retraction involves pulling the scapula or the shoulder blades towards each other without any shoulders shrugging upwards. Then, the protraction which is opposite movement of the scapula that is away from the spine. Lastly, the rotation. The scapula moves around a dorsoventral axis resulting in a rotation in the frontal plane. In this movement, the glenoid cavity is turned upwards or downwards. And when the scapula is articulates with the head of the humerus and raised up, it reaches up to 180 degrees. Lastly, the force transmission. The scapula helps in transmitting all the forces from your arm to your torso resulting in reducing stress on the individual joints while heavy lifting. Individual joints, for example, it may be wrist joint or other joints which are included in the upper limb. Last, we'll talk about the clinical relevance which are related to scapula. So, the scapular winging. This condition occurs when the scapula protrudes from the back due to weakness or paralysis of certain muscles. It can affect shoulder functions significantly. So, a winged scapula is a skeletal medical condition in which the shoulder blade protrudes from a person's back. So, now let's go through some PYQs. So, firstly, what degree of movement of shoulder is primarily facilitated by scapula? The answer is 180 degrees. Secondly, the scapula articulates with which bone at the glenohumeral joint? The answer is humerus. Today we have learned about clavicle and scapula. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. So, And if you have any questions, drop it in the comments. Until next time, stay curious.